do you ever get questions like is god partial why is he giving this to him and why is he not giving that to me yes or why is he or she so happy and why am i so miserable so today queen kunti is going to answer that question all right so we are continuing with the bhagavad gita series here and in that we are doing the queen kunti pastimes uh, which uh, prayer sorry for, from the shrimad bhagavatam first canto uh 8th chapter 29th verse okay 1.8.29 and today we will see if god is partial and if he's not <laughs> all right so if you're new to the channel and if you are not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and share it with your friends and family members and if you want a consultation from me regarding any topic of your life then you can go to my website down in the description and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him <laughs> okay so 1.8.29 shrimad bhagavatam naveda kaschit bhagavamam chikitsadam tavevaham manasa nrinam vidham banam nayasya kaschit daito stri karshiti द्वेश्यस्मिन् विषमस्य मतिर निनाम दिस इज द श्लोक सो द ट्रांसलेशन इज ओ लॉर्ड एंड यस शी इज टेलिंग दिस अबाउट लॉर्ड कृष्णा ओ लॉर्ड नो वन कैन अंडरस्टैंड योर ट्रांसजेंडल पास टाइम्स विच एपियर टू बी ह्यूमेन एंड आर सो मिसलीडिंग यू हैव नो स्पेसिफिक ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ फेवर नॉर डू यू हैव एनी ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ एन people only imagine that you are partial wow she has answered the question but let's see what uh, the purport says so purport to this is as follows the lord's mercy upon the fallen souls is equally distributed he has no one as the specific object of hostility this the very conception of the personality of godhead as a human being is misleading how can god be a human being like you and me right that's misleading sometimes his past times appear to be exactly like a human beings but actually they are transcendental and without any tinge of material contamination so which shloka in the gita does krishna says that my activities and my birth are transcendental janma karma cha me divyam evam yovetti tattvatah tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mame eti sorjunah janma karma chame divyam it means janma my birth karma my actions janma karma chame divyam it means it's divine it's not uh, like materialistic people or it's not bound by the realm of karma janma karma chame divyam evam yo vetti tattvatah tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mame eti sorjuna one who knows this does not take birth again one who knows this means one who realizes this he is undoubtedly known as partial to his pure devotees but in fact he is never partial as much as the sun is never partial to anyone by utilizing the sun rays sometimes even the stones become valuable where else a blind man cannot see the sun although there are enough rays before him darkness and light are two opposite conceptions but this does not mean that the sun is partial in distributing its rays so if we are not attentive to the words of the gita and shrimad bhagavatam then it is our fault it's our mistake it's not that god is not bestowing his uh, blessings upon us the sun rays are open to everyone but the capacities of the receptible receptacles differ foolish people think that devotional service is flattering the lord to get special mercy factually the pure devotees who are engaged in transcendental loving service of the lord are not a mercantile community a mercantile house renders service to someone in exchange of value so basically uh pure form of spiritual life which is devotional service should not be like a business deal where people sometimes go to god and say that oh god if you give me this i'll give you that so that's like a mer- it's like a merchant you know 
he's saying that you give me this i give you that that happens sometimes people go to tirupati balaji uh, which is a very big famous famous temple in south india and they will say to lord balaji ba- lord balaji is none other than vishnu himself so they will go and say to balaji sometimes that okay i if i get this deal of 1 billion dollars i will give you 10% of it <laughs> so please help me give this so that i can donate 10% of this to you so at a pure level this is not like this because we don't have any desire for material enjoyment at all that is the reason it said that at a pure level a pure devotee does not render service unto the lord for such exchange and therefore the full mercy of the lord is open for him suffering and needy men inquisitive persons or philosophers make temporary connections with the lord to serve a particular purpose artho jigyaso artharthi gyani cha bharatar shabha that shloka is there four categories of people come to me that's there in the gita when the purpose is served there is no more relation with the lord okay balaji has given me this deal i give him 10% and i push off <laughs> the business is done a suffering man if he is pious at all prays to the lord for his recovery but as soon as the recovery is over in most cases the suffering man no longer cares to keep any connection with the lord the mercy of the lord is open for him but he is reluctant to receive it that is the difference between a pure devotee and a mixed devotee those who are completely against the service of the lord are considered to be in abject darkness those who ask for the lord's favor only at the time of necessity are partial recipients of the mercy of the lord and those who are sent percent engaged in the service of the lord are full recipients of the mercy of the lord such partiality in receiving the lord's mercy is relative to the recipient and it is not due to the partiality of the all merciful lord partiality of the all merciful lord so when we only approach god for materialistic benedictions then we miss out on things because we do not obtain him we obtain his resources that's the problem you see so then we only get you know 5% 10% of what we can get actually but that is because of our mistake it's not that god is being partial we are only not having the right desires and we only don't know what to ask him when the lord descends on this material world by his all merciful energy he plays like a human being and therefore it appears that the lord is partial to his devotees only but that is not a fact despite such apparent manifestation of partiality his mercy is equally distributed in the battlefield of kurukshetra all persons who died in the fight before the presence of the lord lord means lord krishna got salvation without the necessary qualifications because salvation means mukti they were delivered from this material world they went back to the spiritual world without the necessary qualifications because death before the presence of the lord purifies the passing soul from the effects of all the sins wow beautiful and therefore the dying man gets a chance gets a place somewhere in the transcendental abode in the spiritual world in vaikuntha that's what is mentioned here somehow or other if someone puts himself open in the sun rays he is sure to get the requisite benefit both by the heat and by ultraviolet rays therefore the conclusion is that the lord is never partial it is wrong for the people in general to think of him as partial so there ends the purport and uh, many times you will hear that people will say in the uh, war of kurukshetra in mahabharat when the war was going on uh, there are many people especially many fools will say in india especially you go in trains and you go to villages you go to towns they will argue that how lord krishna was always partial to the pandavas yes they will say that oh krishna always you know uh, he supported the pandavas well of course he supported them because they deserved to be supported because they were on the side of dharma they were on the side of religion they were on the side of righteousness and 
the the kurus the kauravas they were on the side of adharma they were on the side of religion this no sinful act which they had not commit the kurus especially headed by duryodhana his best friend karna his younger brother dushasan and his great uncle shakuni great so these four culprits of the mahabharat they have done all the possible sinful activities which you can imagine and which you cannot imagine starting from poisoning bhima when he was young so young maybe he doesn't know anything <laughs> so duryodhan had tried to poison him there even even at that age can you believe it and then when uh, they were young they were growing then yudhishthira maharaj and the brothers and kunti all f- six of them were sent to varnavrat in lakshagra where these four culprits they had organized for them to be burned there that is why it is known as lakshagra the house of lak which was made using inflammable material so that is why they uh, that is why they deserve to be killed because they are like terrorists and when we when you kill terrorists there's no harm in that they deserve to be killed otherwise if the terrorists are alive then they will wreak havoc in the society like for example duryodhana later on what he did he said that okay uh, uh, he said to dushasan that go and drag uh, draupadi from her palace and we will disrobe her we will strip her naked and we will enjoy <laughs> yes and then later on when the war kicked off they killed abhimanyu seven maharathis together they went and ripped abhimanyu of course that's a very long past time i will not speak about it here but there's all the varieties of sins all the wrong doings they had committed so that is why they had to be wiped out of this planet otherwise things would really get bad but people uh, don't understand this sometimes so there are many foolish people who will argue that oh actually you know it, krishna had some affection towards the pandavas that is why he was like this he never supported the kauravas i mean why should krishna support the kauravas is there any reason there is no sane reason in the entire mahabharat why you should be supporting the kauravas i mean you play the game of dice which is already fixed the that balls with which shakuni used to play as we say na pasa those <laughs> the game of dice everything was fixed if they wanted 6 only 6 will appear if they wanted 5 only 5 will appear so they had cheated yudhishthira maharaj and all the other pandavas including draupadi and kunti and they had stripped them of everything so they had to be killed the repercussions had to come one day and therefore all of these four duryodhan dushasan shakuni and karna they met death in a very bad way all right so krishna never was partial to the pandavas he was supporting the pandavas because he they were on the side of dharma that was the only reason otherwise krishna is not a foolish person that okay you know i like how arjuna looks you know he's handsome so i will support him maybe some people also say that uh, arjuna was the husband of krishna's sister subhadra so that is another reason why uh, krishna had supported them but that's not true because uh when the time comes when krishna is approached both by arjun and duryodhan krishna says that i will be on one side without any weapon and my army the narayani sena which is the strength which is having the strength of one akshohini division akshohini is one division no? they say that uh my army is one akshohini two akshohinis so it's like a measure of the size of the army of course there's a long list of what an akshohini is what 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 are the different army formations which it contains so then uh, arjuna and duryodhana they were given this option and then arjuna said i do not want your army i want you only so imagine if somebody comes to you tomorrow uh, suppose there are 10 people who come to you 
and out of 10 nine people tell you that i want your pen i want your mobile i want your laptop i want your watch i want your home i want your husband i want your wife and imagine the last person comes to you and say i just want to be your friend so so will you behave equally with all the 10 well obviously not because the last person who has come and asked you for your friendship he deserves to get a special treatment because he has shown a higher level of uh, commitment towards you so we may have acquaintances we may have friends we may have, but then we have some people who are known as best friends yes our family members there is a special relationship we do not treat every lady the way we treat our mother why not that we are partial to the ladies but our mother has done so much for us so it is our duty to give her a special treatment which we may not give to other ladies of course that doesn't mean you go and insulting other ladies but we may not give that same level of uh, perks which we give to our mother yes maybe we take her on a business class <laughs> someday <laughs> from india to germany maybe uh, but we may not do it with uh, any other lady we may not do it with our uh, with the sister of our mother we may not do it with the sister of our father because they might have not had that much contribution in our life and that's perfectly fine because nobody can replace the mother you see so when somebody offers a special treatment offers a special love then we reciprocate with them on a different level so that's not partiality and actually that's actual impartiality because impartial means that impartiality does not only mean that you deal with everyone equally it also means that when somebody it it actually means that you are dealing with people according to the way they are dealing with you so because some people are treating us very specially so we also treat them very specially yes so that's what krishna had done that is why he loved the pandavas and he wanted yudhishthira maharaj to be the king of the entire world and that's what happened whatever he desired happened ultimately because whatever he desires will happen and should happen and has to happen and happened so yudhishthira maharaj became the king of the entire world he was the chakravarti samrat undisputed emperor of the entire world so that's what krishna wanted because he was the he was the only one among all the 105 <laughs> hundred uh hundred sons uh, hundred sons of dhritarashtra and five sons of kunti i mean uh, five sons of pandu of course so he was the only one from the 105 who krishna knew that very well he deserved to be the emperor so finally he became the emperor so god is not partial we decide things and then we put the blame on god we will take alcohol and spoil our body and our spoil our mind, spoil our habits. We will take meat. We will indulge in uh, illicit sex. We will indulge in intoxication, gambling like Shakuni did. And then when things go haywire in our life, we go and say, oh, look, God is so partial, you know. He has given so much to that person, but he didn't give anything to me. Well, it's because of our own actions. God is not responsible for that. He is just sanctioning what we desire, all right? Because otherwise then you will say that God is cruel. He doesn't sanction what I want, you see. <laughs> but that sanction will be within the realm of our karmas, all right? So that will not ex that will not be outside of the law of karma. It cannot, it cannot cross the law of karma, okay? So whatever we desire, if that is there in our karma, then God will sanction it. There you go. <laughs> so that's the answer god is not partial he deals with everybody equally but at the same time if somebody gives him special treatment he also gives them special treatment all right as the sun is never partial but when we look to the sun we can get all the rays of the light of the sun <laughs> okay so if you are new then please subscribe and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with your family members and friends and colleagues and if you want a consultation please go down to the link in the description below okay until next time god is there with you all the time just look to him and hopefully you find him <laughs> okay bye bye see you